President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan, the Secretary of Agriculture and Mrs. Block. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Please sit down. And thank you very much, and good morning, and welcome to the White House. I'm delighted you could be with us on this first day of spring. Here in Washington, it means the advent of cherry blossoms and <clears throat> lots of tourists, and hopefully some congressional action on the budget. <laughs> but for all of you, the, the beginning of spring signals the time to pull equipment out of the sheds and to turn attention to the fields. This is also National Agriculture Day, a day set aside to express our appreciation the working men and women of agriculture for the bounty of food and fiber you provide and for the strength that you give us. It's a fitting time to honor America's bedrock industry. And I encourage the American people both on and off the farm to participate in the special activities that are taking place all across our nation. National Agriculture Day is also a special day for me because as I've told Jack Block on many occasions, I'm a bit of a rancher myself and He's never seen fit to tell me otherwise. <laughs> I remember once some years ago having an experience that uh, you don't understand, uh, decided with all that space and everything out there, uh, uh, why didn't we have our own fresh eggs every morning? So I put in a battery of chickens, and we did. We had our own fresh eggs every morning. They only cost $1.65 a piece. <laughs> well, today we pay tribute to an industry whose record of productivity is unmatched by any other in the world. Our farmers and ranches produce the the most wholesome and varied range of foodstuffs known anywhere. In fact, our agricultural community has been so successful, it's too often been taken for granted. Few advances in modern technology can surpass the miracle of American agriculture. In, night, or in 1820, a farmer in this country produced enough food to feed four people. By 1940, one American farmer fed 11 people. Today, the same farmer can produce enough food for himself and 75 other people. This unparalleled productivity enables us to feed our own population and tens of millions of people throughout the world. The United States is the world's leading exporter of agricultural products. Our food travels to every corner of the earth. In 1982, nearly one-fifth of the world's agricultural products was shipped from American ports. And let me assure you, now that we've regained our reputation as a reliable supplier, we're going to keep it that way. Some would say that American agriculture is nothing short of magic. Well, it's not magic. It's the miracle of freedom. Millions of individuals, each representing a single farming operation, yet linked together so effectively that agriculture is the largest business in the United States. An enterprise of 23 million people with assets equal to about 70% of those held by all manufacturing corporations in the United States. I'm delighted to be with those of you who make American agriculture work so well. And I believe part of the reason for your great success is your partnership with the Department of Agriculture and agencies like the Agricultural Stabilization and Cons Conservation Service, the ASCS. The county ASCS office is the place where you're likely to see a neighbor's pickup. 
truck outside and have some good conversation inside. And that's the way government works best, at the grassroots, where programs are responsive to the people they're meant to help. I want all of the ASCS state committeemen and directors with us this morning to know that I appreciate what you've done to make our Payment in Kind program a success. Thanks to your fine efforts, we've cleared away many price-depressing surpluses, and we've moved closer to the point where the market, not the government, will be sending the production signals to our producers. I'm sure that you're approaching this year's farm program with the same dedication. For our part, we'll take into account the hard lessons of recent years as we work toward the resolution of farm problems. And so, <clears throat> missed me. And so, <laughs> so let me take this opportunity to congratulate the JC Award winners with us today. They have recently been honored for their outstanding contributions to American agriculture. We're proud of your achievements. We're proud of your, all that you've done and we heard some pretty good stories at breakfast this morning. You know what it's like, all of you, to watch a hailstorm destroy a year's labor, how it feels to witness a dreaded fever spread through your livestock. But you also know the value of free enterprise and what it means to have a personal stake in deciding your future. You know the exhilaration of opportunity and the accomplishments of scientific research. We now have many disease-resistant crops and stronger livestock, and we're on the threshold of even greater scientific and technological breakthroughs. The work being done at places like USDA's Beltsville Agricultural Research Center is bringing exciting new advances. National Agriculture Day is a celebration of America. And when we talk about our farm community, we're talking about the values and traditions that made America great. Hard work. Faith, family, neighbors helping neighbors, freedom and independence. We can touch the spirit of America in our farm communities. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your contributions keep our great nation strong, prosperous, and free. And we thank you for that, and God bless you all. And now I'd like to ask the families of the JC Award winners to join us here on the platform. And then we had the pleasure of starting the day with breakfast with these fine people. And here are the, the four winners, Pete Botko, Raleigh Moore, Gary Veenstra, and John Belter. Now, the schedule calls, and Nancy and I are going to move on, and I will turn you over to Jack Block. But with all these wonderful-looking people up here in the platform, these fine young families here, and what I was saying about freedom being the basis of our agriculture, I can't resist telling just one little story. I happen to collect stories that I get from defectors in some of the uh, Warsaw Block nations of the stories that the people in those countries tell among themselves about their own system shows a little cynicism too at times and one has to do with a commissar the Soviet Union visiting a collective farm grabbed the first fellow he saw and he said tell me comrade any complaints oh he said I've never heard anyone complain no sir everything's just fine well he said how are the crops he said crops never been better they're just wonderful he said potatoes he said if we could pile the potatoes in one pile they would reach the foot of God and the commissar said, comrade, this is the Soviet Union. There is no God. He said, that's all right. There are no potatoes. 